Welcome to the video broadcast of Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church with pastor and teacher, Rev. Dr. Randall Kane Jr. Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church is located at 101 North Dunleith Avenue in Winston-Salem. Please sit back and enjoy this message already in progress. Hallelujah! Hey, hallelujah! God. Let's take the time to glorify the Lord today. Hallelujah. Woo, thank you, Jesus. I got to take off my choir hat. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Before I get started, hey, hallelujah. I just want to take some time out <laughs> to thank God for all of my family and my friends that have shown up for me on today. First of all, I want all of my co-workers and my schoolmates, go ahead and stand on up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. And now for my family, because it's a bunch of y'all. Go on and stand up. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I just thank God for my family. Thank y'all so much for coming out and supporting me. I, I thank God for my aunt, Dr. Dolores, Taylor, Amen. Apostle, Prophetess. Amen. She is definitely one of my mentors and my role model. Thank you. She stood in the gap back when it was not popular for women to preach and have their own church. Amen. So to God be the glory. I thank you and I love you. Yeah. Amen. Okay, we're going to, let me, let me pray. Let me get myself back together. We can stand up and pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the vine and I am the branch. He who abides in you and you in him bear much fruit. For without you, I can do nothing. If I abide in you and your word abides in me, I can ask what I desire and it shall be done for me. Lord, my desire is to do your will. It's to live your will. It's to speak your will. Lord, I am nothing without you. But I choose to be your vessel. Speak through me. Speak to my heart. Speak to the hearts of the people that you have set before me on today. I know that your word will be a lamp unto their feet and your word will be a light unto their pathway. Anoint their ears, Lord God, to hear your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Keep standing, I'm sorry, y'all. This is the last of those who can't stand. We're going to read the word today. The word today is coming out of Matthew chapter 16, 13 through 18. Praise the Lord. If you got it, say amen. If you don't say, wait a minute. Matthew 16, verse 13 through 18. Thank you, Malcolm. Somebody else probably wanted to know that too. Okay. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So Jesus said to them, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, 
but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter. He changed his name. You are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. You may be seated. To God be the glory. There are some key verses that need to be pointed out. In 16 it says, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, the rock. 17, it says, flesh and blood did not reveal it to Peter, but my Father in heaven revealed it to Peter. Jesus changed Simon Barjona's name to Peter. And in 18, it says, the church belongs and was built by God. The church that Jesus built is a body of people that believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's all right, baby. You go ahead and cry. That's okay. We love babies in this church. Amen. Praise God. Again, the church that Jesus built is a body of people that believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And check this out. Flesh and blood won't reveal it to you. But my Father in heaven will reveal it to you. Let me explain. When you walk into a church building and can feel the presence of God's love, you can feel his presence like we did this morning and like we did right now. You know that you're in the church that Jesus built. You don't know it because the name church is written on the building. You know it because God, my Father, revealed it to you. Jesus changed Simon Barjona's name to Peter because Peter's role and authority in the community was going to change. Peter was going to spread the teachings of Jesus Christ and help establish the early Christian church. Jesus will change your role when you come into the fullness and the knowledge of God. He'll change your name too. He'll change it from deaconess to minister. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. The church, which is the body of the people that believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of the living God, represented everything that Jesus stood for. The church is the reason Jesus chose to die. The church is the reason Jesus chose to live, to lay down his life. And the church was worth the sacrifice. The church in the book of Acts had a strong sense of community and devotion to the teachings of Jesus. Believers gathered together regularly for worship, fellowship, and the breaking of the bread. They shared their resources. I want y'all to understand this. They shared their resources. They shared their resources. They cared for one another. They cared for one another. And actively spread the gospel. They actively spread the gospel. So if you are a body of people Believers that believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, you will actively spread the gospel. Amen. I've gone to church for the majority of my life, and it, I can, easy, it can easily become just a routine, a place that I'm just supposed to go. However, the church should be more. The title of today's sermon is, In the Church, But Not of the Church. Amen. How can you be in the church, but not of the church? We can physically come to the church, 
but not live according to the word or to the will of God. We can know what to say, know what to do, know the way to act, and know how to keep up appearances. Amen. But it won't welcome the bum that comes off the street in the middle of the service. <laughs> we will ignore him and pretend that he doesn't even matter. We won't even speak to our neighbor. We won't even try to make amends with our sister, our brother, our father, our coworker, or even our church member. But I know that ain't nobody in here. Hallelujah. So in Matthew, in Matthew 22, 37 through 39, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul is to have a deep, sincere, and wholehearted devotion to him in every aspect of your life. Loving God with all your heart means having a genuine and passionate love for him. Loving God with all your mind involves an intellectual engagement, understanding, engagement and understanding. It includes studying his word, meditating on his teachings, and seeking to know him deeply through prayer and reflection. Loving God with all your soul means, to, means dedicating your entire being to him. Dedicating your entire being to him. I'll get into that a little bit later. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul requires a continual commitment to growing your relationship with him. It is a daily choice. It is a daily choice. It is a daily choice to prioritize him above all else. Now, the second commandment that's like the first one says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So the question is, who is your neighbor? And how do you love your neighbor as yourself? In Luke 10, 25, 37, somebody asked the same question to Jesus. Jesus told them the same thing. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And someone asked, well, who is my neighbor? So Jesus tells them the story of the Good Samaritan, which I'm, I'm pretty sure most of you all already know. The Good Samaritan was the one that helped the stranger that was left on the street for dead. Y'all remember that one, right? Okay, I hope you do because I can't get into it. All right, so anyway, Jesus teaches that everyone, regardless of their background, ethnicity, social status, should be considered a neighbor. Everyone should be considered your neighbor. Not the person that just lives next door to you, not the person that you sit next to. Everyone should be considered your neighbor. To truly love your neighbor as yourself, you must cultivate a deep sense of understanding, respect, and care for others. Here are some ways to practice loving your neighbor as yourself. Show kindness and empathy. Show respect. Listen actively. Take the time to listen actively to, other, to others. Pay attention to their thoughts, their feelings, their concerns. Show genuine interest and offer support when needed. Practice forgiveness. It's a practice. Practice forgiveness. You can practice on me. Practice forgiveness. Forgiveness is an essential aspect of loving your neighbor as yourself. 
And the last one is be inclusive. Well, what does that mean, April? Include others in your social circles and activities. You know how we don't want to, we got our own little group and we don't want anybody else in that group. Okay, well, God says to love your neighbor and loving your neighbor is including others within your social circle. So a little recap, and then I'm going to finish this up. I ain't going to keep you long. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, the church should be developing a personal relationship and seeking his presence instead of only watching TV in your spare time. Hey, I'm talking to myself, okay? All right, I ain't talking to nobody, I'm talking to me. <laughs> uh, we should be studying his word and meditating on his teachings instead of meditating on carnal things, experiencing his presence, experiencing his presence like we did this morning <laughs> before the word and did this afternoon. If that experience is awkward for you, then you haven't spent enough intimate time with God. We should surrender our will in our way. It should align with the will of God. In order to love your neighbor as yourself, you should be welcoming that stranger that doesn't look like you instead of ignoring him or giving him the cold shoulder. Again, we should be show kindness and empathy instead of hate. We should respect our neighbor instead of having contempt or despising them. We should be listening actively instead of being too busy. We should be offering help and support instead of hoarding everything that you have and don't want to give it out to nobody. We should be practicing forgiveness instead of holding a grudge. Invite someone into your social circle. Invite them to dinner. Invite them to your cookout. Ask them to come hang out with you. We can come to church every day, every week, and every time the doors open, but if we do not genuinely show love, go out of our way to strangers, to that bum that shows up in the middle of service, then we're just in the church, but not of the church. Let's be the church. Let's be Jesus Church. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to the radio broadcast of Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church with pastor and teacher, Rev. Dr. Randell Kane Jr. It is our prayer that this message inspires you to further your walk with Christ. For more information about Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church, go to our website, zmmbc.net, or call 336-725-7390. We live stream our services on our Facebook page. Just search for Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church page. Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church is located at 101 North Donleith Avenue in Winston-Salem. Be blessed and continue to further your walk with Christ.